Ya YouTubers, Taz Man here bringing you another episode of Foundry VTT from the ground up. Is that what I call it? I think that's what I called it. <laughs> so, anyway, in a couple weeks ago, I actually posted a video on the player's kind of manual for um, for Fantasy Grounds, and I thought, you know, I probably should do one also for Foundry VTT. Now. I will be completely honest and right up front, uh, I'm not as familiar with Foundry VTT and changes that have happened with it as I am with Fantasy Grounds. Like setting up, uh, on the GM side I'm, I'm quite familiar, I understand a lot of stuff and we've gone through lots of videos that kind of explain that stuff, however um, I, I thought it would be good to also kind of use that same knowledge to show you as a player what you can expect to see. Now, one of the very first things I want to mention is in my Fantasy Grounds video, I was showing you, yeah, you can connect through local host, you can connect through uh, the cloud, and they host that for you. Foundry VTT does not have that, so one thing that might be a determining factor for the GM would be do I know how to configure port forwarding or NAT through my firewall so that my players can access it while keeping my network fairly secure because anytime you open something up in your firewall you're obviously introducing a vulnerability. So with Foundry VTT from the GM's point of view you do have to set up some kind of port forwarding or NAT or something because there isn't a cloud service. Now there are services out there that you can pay a monthly type of thing and actually have them host your table and then you don't have to worry about that. <coughs> One really nice thing about Foundry VTT though is there is absolutely nothing to install. Uh, you just have to have a browser and we're using Chrome here. Did I double click? I I think I was outside my VM window so it didn't count it. So basically uh, what you would do to connect to a Foundry VTT table depending on the settings, I'm going to use the default settings that that the uh, that uh, Foundry sets up and that is it uses port 30,000. In this case we're going to do it off of uh, my main computer so as you can see here, it's going to 192.168.10.1 colon 30,000. So instead of just typing that there, I'm just gonna click on that and you'll see this is what you'll be greeted by. Uh, greeted by. Uh, you might not get this little red box. This is simply saying, hey, do you realize you're in a really small window and uh, it needs larger than that for it to display properly. From what I've seen, it displays fine with this. Uh, I do try and keep it around 720 by uh, 1280 by 720, just so it keeps everything nice and large on the screen, so you can see it. So if you get that, there's a couple things you can do um, that might get rid of it, which we're going to talk about right now. But once you've typed in the IP address and the colon 30,000, you'll be taken to something similar to this. There could be pictures and world description and all that fun stuff here. This other stuff might be filled out. Um, obviously, you're not going to have the world, uh, the administrator's password. This access key is the password you use to join the table. It can be set up by your, your, your GM and they can tell you. They can also leave it blank. So our user here is going to be the player because we're the player. <laughs> and I don't have any access keys set up. Now one thing we can do to give us a little bit more screen real estate is get rid of our tab, our uh, address bar, and our bookmark bar. And the quickest way to do that is hit F11 on your keyboard and it will get rid of that stuff. It'll put you in full screen mode in your browser. Hit F F11 again to bring it all back just so you don't get, you know, oh no, Taz has led me astray and now I can't get my bars back. So just hit F11 again. So we don't have a key so we're going to go ahead and join the session. So one of the first things that do does happen do 
uh, is that when you get in there, I'm right clicking, going to user configuration, you might get a panel like this that pops up where it will actually list the characters that you can do. Like if I release this character, you can see I have three characters that the GM has given me rights to play. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep our Randall here. Uh, you can also choose a color that uh, that uh, will represent your little dot here and it's just a whole bunch of color you can choose from. So we're just going to leave everything as is, click save configuration and now you can see Da Playa is uh, controlling Randall which is the fighter right here. Right here is Quillath. So um, let's talk just a little bit about the interface and what you're greeted with. So right up here, it could go across the bar but right up here we have the different maps or they're called scenes in this. Uh, underneath the uh, Foundry, VTT, Anvil we will see a little player icon, we'll see something look like rulers and we'll see what looks like a bookmark and that's pretty much exactly what those are. So if I um, left click, right click I mean and hold the mouse button you can move the map. You can also scroll in and out using the mouse wheel. So if we do this, what we can do with these things is, one, we have our little player options, and that's what these are related to. These are the rule option type things, and this is bookmarks. We really aren't going to be using bookmarks right now. All right, so what I want to talk about mainly is mostly these first two. So this one right here is for selecting characters, so we can select me, we can select that one. Uh, if I'm moving both of them, I can select both of them and they will move together. Um, and you'll notice just like in, in Fantasy Grounds, we also have the, the walls here. And if we move into this room, we'll actually see there's a little guy right here. Uh, if we move away, it goes away. Uh, characters do have their own lighting information. If we select out here, we unselect everyone. So you'll notice this is a human fighter and they only they must be carrying a torch or whatever because they only see a tiny ring around them where this is an elf and they have dark vision and all that so they can actually see 60 feet uh, basically in front of them the next thing we have if we bring both our friends out here actually I'm gonna bring them both back in here just for a second to show another thing so um, with our with our human here, they don't they don't have a good sight at all. I'm gonna unhide an enemy that is actually right here in front of them, um, and we'll see. Even though the it's straight in front of them and technically would be in vision range, because he only has lighting here, he will not see it. But our elf, on the other hand, will be able to see this character. So let me go ahead in here and we will show this character. You can see here there is this little awakened shrub or I think I can't remember what it's called. Um, and right now I don't have any of the real stats. If I wanted to show more stats I could but this is just a really quick video to show you the player's view and what you know what to expect as a player. So the first thing is the we, we've talked about the uh, selecting so if we right click and out here we get generic if we have our character selected we can see their point of view so um, the next thing would be this one which is the targeting so this is what you click to target someone so now you can see I'm targeting my friend and you can tell by these little arrows that show I'm targeting them. click them left click them once more and it will untarget them let's go ahead and do him and you can see I can select him or I can select him. Um, if I hold shift I can actually select both of them. I don't think it's with control. No. But with shift you can actually select both of them but note that this would mean I'm attacking both of them. So uh, be a little careful just like with fantasy grounds where you're selecting. This next one down is your ruler, so measuring distance. If I want to know how far I am from this guy, I can see 45 feet. You'll notice that the color of the ruler 
is the color basically that I selected down here. Although in this case it's going to be the same for both of them because I'm playing both of them. I just wanted to point out that yes you can play both of them. Um, you'll also notice even though that it's selected when it's in this guy's view he can't actually see that selection. So it is smart enough to know that stuff. The next thing we have is this one that you might think was the rulers but this is for your different area of effects. So let's say I'm going to throw a fireball uh, and it does a you know 10 foot radius we can bring it right to 10 foot roughly and you can see where that fireball is going to impact um, we do have options in here to change it if we have images we can actually replace the image I don't know that I have any images for it uh, so I'm not going to worry about that but you can change what the color is going to look like, the border. You can see this little black line going all the way around. You can see its distance. Really, it's more, it's more informational for the player. So uh, as the player, I can move it around and say I'm centering my fireball there. Or I could say I want to center it right here so that it gets that guy. And maybe there's a guy up here or whatever. So uh, we can also, whoops, I didn't mean to do that one. Control Z. Uh, if I then click on it, I can hit backspace to delete it. So we can also do the same thing with our cone. So here you can see we have a cone. Now, actually, one thing I want to check is we have walls set up. So let's see if it actually blocks part of that cone. I don't think it does, but that's okay. We also obviously have cube. We can come in here and, you know, make our nice square ish 15 by 15 whatever um, and we can do that and then of course we have our line so these are your different uh, options for your area of effects I, I'm gonna call them major measurement controls so down here if you have different things you can actually put them in your hotbar so if we double click a character here go into character mode here uh, if we go to and this is where you're really gonna see squishiness uh, if we go to I think it's inventory for example we can bring our short sword down here and now if we roll that we can see oh I did it again so just single click is all you need to do uh, I'm going to erase that again. You can see that it will roll for your sword. So, might take it. Oh, I know why it didn't do it because I was outside the VM. Now I'm inside the VM. So, you can see here that it will give you the option to attack or damage. Uh, so, for example, we have that guy selected. We're going to go ahead and say attack. So, this is going to be the roll for attack. Here, this is where the GM might tell you I want you to roll it in the dice tower if it's a skill check which is basically a private GM role. Um, I go over all these different options in another video, so I'm not gonna go into great detail. Uh, then they might say it's with advantage, disadvantage, or a normal role. So if we do advantage, there's the sound I was listening for, but obviously this isn't actually rolling, it's just pulling up the thing. So here you can see we rolled a nat 20, I'm not sure what the one was. I might have to go look at the stats on the sword just to see why that says one. Uh, that was, oh, was it the offhand I did? That's unimportant to be, to be completely honest. That's unimportant towards the scope of this video as to why I got, a, oh, did I click? I clicked advantage. Did I seriously roll a 1 and a 20? That's nuts. All right, so anyway, sorry. Um, so basically, that's how you do your attack. Then, because it's a hit, we're going to go ahead and do damage. We got a nat 20, so now we can click on the damage one. There we go. 
And if it was a crit hit, in this case it was, we can click on that and it will do 2d6 plus 3. So you can see it um, rolled the second dice as damage. That is a terrible crit hit. Um, so 7 damage. At this point, the GM will actually say, okay, so let me make sure that guy's targeted. And they will click on their thing and they will say apply damage. And you'll see that, well, you can't see because I don't have that enabled. Let me enable that real quick. Uh, you'll see that now you, you actually hit it. Now, I think if we go, and this is kind of moving outside our scope once again of what I want to be showing. Uh, let's go here. I'm just gonna put all the guys in the combat tracker. So one thing is you can actually see that as a GM, if you don't want them to see a little progress bar, you can do that, which is kind of nice. Um, you can do that in Fantasy Grounds um, or not. I'm going <clears> to <throat> go ahead and if I can do it really quick, I'm going to show you that. So if we say uh, always for everyone. And then update the token. Now you can see the little hit bar. So we could do that with all our tokens. Right now we don't have that set, but that way your players get an idea. So um, <clears throat> anyway, that's that's really quickly. My throat is not doing well. Uh, that's really quickly kind of the hot bar down here. As we go up, we already talked about that. Then we have this over here. So this first one is your chat window. This is where you do rolls. Once again, just like in in uh, Fantasy Grounds, you can type a command. In this case, it's roll. And we could do 1d20. And you'll see that rolls us a 1d20. We rolled a 10. So you have your commands and stuff like that. Uh, once again, you do have these, like if I want to make it so the GM is able to see it, but the player cannot, I could, this is the equivalent of saying roll it in the dice tower. We could say that we're going to do a, um, slash roll, uh, let's do a 1d20 and we'll do a modifier of plus three, right? If I hit enter here the game master is able to see it. I'm able to see it, uh, but my other players aren't able to see it. I was doing the wrong one. We want blind GM roll, I believe. There we go. So if we do blind GM roll, <clears throat> then I'm not able to see what I rolled. However, the GM can go look and see that, you know, I rolled a 16 on the dice and I got 19 in all. So this is really good, once again, just like in Fantasy Grounds for metagaming. Uh, we also have uh, the little fist here, which is our combat. And I actually haven't started it, even though we did damage. But uh, if I go start that, here's this one. We'll, we'll go ahead and say roll initiative. So we're rolling NPC initiatives. As the player, I can come in here and just click this dice as like so and now we have our initiatives as well we're going to click begin combat and you'll see it then puts everyone up when it is the end of your turn you'll get the end turn button here that you can click and it'll go to the next person when it's the next person you don't have that so you don't have to worry about players you know inadvertently skipping other people because it becomes disabled or gone um, and then of course the GM can also change that to go to the next person. <clears throat> so anyway, that is the actions. Uh, then we have our actual actors. This is the people that the GM is allowing this player to actually see. So we can, for example, we don't have a human druid here, but we can actually click on that and get their stats, look at their stuff. If if you do not have GM's permission to see it, you won't see it. So other characters, for example, you cannot see the monsters that I have in this, this same spot. 
there's actually awakened shrubs and there's an acolyte that's in here as well so um, you'll be able to see the characters that you manage but you can also see them just by simply double clicking on the token themselves um, we're gonna have to go over the character sheet too uh, this part right here is for your items if there's special items that the GM's created they'll put them in here you'll be able to see them this is journal entries this next one over is roll tables if you're having any roll tables shared with you they'll be in here and then you can use them to roll this is for playlists for audio and stuff you'll rarely have very much in here that you control because the GM is going to do that then we have our compendiums now I actually have the monsters hidden so that the players can't metagame and go oh yeah these uh, shrub guys they have this much health or whatever um, so that is also controllable by the GM however other things maybe I want you to be able to see you can see classes so you can come in here and look oh here's here's you know the leveling of a bard and what I get and all that fun stuff uh, or you know your different stuff so here's your spells trade goods um, the ratio features items classes as I've stated before one of my pet peeves is there's nothing for backgrounds and there's also nothing for race uh, so they kind of have racial features but it's basically using a very generic uh, thing it's not actually doing anything I what I would like to see is kind of like when you're looking through the book at the races you see languages and all that stuff here you have to kind of add them one by one you know if I'm a hill dwarf I need to do this which means I probably also get, you know, Dwarvish Resilience or whatever it's called. Uh, the dwarf right here, Dwarven Resilience. Uh, so anyway, that's something I would like to see added. However, that is not Foundry VTT. That is the rule set uh, for it. And finally, we have our little cogs over here, which let us do our settings and different things like that. So uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is right here you have five toolbars that you can do. You can just cycle through them and add things. And then this is, you can also add macros here. Like if we click on this, we can add a macro. Um, that is way outside the scope of this because you basically use JavaScript and stuff and can't really go in that. What you would do is change it to be a script instead of chat. If it's a chat, we could do something like that and then every time we double click it we or single click in this case it will say whatever we want which I don't know why you'd necessarily want that uh, and then this is basically uh, to hide and unhide it and the little folder here is to show you all your different things that are across everything here so the last thing I want to go over and we're at 30 minutes so I'm gonna kinda really cruise over this is the character sheet itself so the character sheet is kinda like the uh, one you have on your paper or you know your paper sheet uh, you have your hit points right here uh, you just kinda keep track of these you can uh, like with hit dice you can uh, they automatically replenish you know if you do short rest uh, if you use a hit dice you can actually come in here and say I want to roll a hit dice it'll automatically subtract it we can see our armor class here um, this is editable editable by the player so you know they can cheat whatever they want you have your your flight uh, your movement right now it's just showing the 30 foot movement which is just on the ground we could also come in here and say oh but this player also has wings and they can do 30 and if we submit that now you'll see there's a fly third uh, the next thing we have is the initiative this is automatically created by whatever your dex is on this side we have our dex uh, our attribute modifiers over here is our attribute saves if we have proficiency in specific saves then it will automatically do that so if I uncheck this you'll see it's a three 
if I check it, it goes to a five. Uh, to actually roll it, click on the main thing, you could do an ability check or a save. Um, if we're told we can do any of these with advantage, does it pop up? Yes, it does. Okay, good. And save is the same, advantage, disadvantage, normal. All right, good. So uh, that's those things. Here's all your different skills. Obviously, the check means there's proficiency, so it'll add your proficiency modifier that is up here into it. You can see, I forgot to mention these guys. This is just all text. Uh, this is your race. This is your... Uh, is that background? Because that's really weird because they really don't do... Yeah, that's your background. Uh, and then this is your alignment. Uh, then we have over here for our death saves. We can click that. You don't need to roll death because I'm not dead, obviously. If you have levels of exhaustion, if you get inspiration from the GM, you can check it there. This is our size, languages we know, uh, weapon proficiencies, you know, like. So if you're learning something and your GM says, okay, you learned how to use the Poisoner's Kit, you just come in here, click on the little edit, and say Poisoner's Kit. Hit update, and now you see we have Poisoner's Kit. Go ahead and take that back. Update. So after our attributes and stuff, we have the inventory. This is what we have on us. We have a longsword hand axe, uh, another hand axe that's offhand. We have a longbow. We have our armor. We have a shield. And then we have more of the consumables, our arrows, rations, all that. We have a horn. We have our backpack pouch and a quiver. So this is all your different stuff here. If you click on these, if you click out here, it will give you more of a quick description. If you want a deeper description, you can click on this and then you can go into details. Uh, you can see the effects and everything else if it has them. Uh, if you just click the dice, it will roll it for you. Roll the attack and the damage. Uh, and then all you have to do is, if you hit, then you can go click the damage. Uh, let's go on to features. So these are your, your features for your class. So as you can see here, we have fighter. We click on that, we can see all this. I'm not sure if we click the dice on this, does it just say fighter and give all the info? Yeah, it just puts it out to the, the thing. Uh, here's our second wind ability. So if we click on that, you can see that are we using it and it's going to consume it. So now you'll see we have zero uses. If we try and click it again, it will say we can't. Uh, then, because we have passive traits, if we don't know what those are, we can actually come in here and see what those are, which are our passive traits. Spellbook, fighters don't have them, but this is where it'll list your spells. Kind of like the inventory, you can click on them, and it'll say select level, uh, you know, for your spell level, and things along those lines. Uh, and then all that other fun stuff. Uh, our effects, these are things that are on us. Effects can go in here. And then this is just put it all in yourself. You can type a little thing about your appearance, personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, and then whatever else you want. Oh, I forgot one last thing. So we can also do this. Um, if we right click on our character, sorry, let me unselect characters. If we right click on our character here, uh, we can actually add things though. So this right here is elevation. So if this guy were hovering, we'd say now they're hovering at 30 feet and it'll put 30 feet. I'm going to move them out here so you can see it a little better. But you can see we have 30 feet there. Um, right click again. If we want to target, we can click target. That's fine. So this is how we toggle our combat state. This little guy right here actually is kind of good. This is assigning effects to your character. We can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but you can put any of these icons on them. Now the icon doesn't actually do anything. It's just an icon to remind you something. For example, we could say this one that, look, well, yeah, that's prone. So we can say he's prone. So it's not actually going to do anything. Uh, like if I put prone on I can't do it there, but if I put prone on the shrub here and I go to attack him, it's not going to know automatically that if I'm using a ranged weapon, 
it's a disadvantage. You know, if I move up next to him, will it know? And I guess we can check this to verify, so I'm not lying to you guys. But uh, let's unprone us real quick. There we go. And uh, <clears throat> keep hitting the wrong button. Go ahead and do that to, oops, right click again to get rid of that. So we want to target him. And if we use our bow, which I'm pretty sure we're a ranger, we better have a bow. Uh, if we do that, hit close, go to our chat window. Oh, that just reminded me of another thing. If I go to do attack, it's still going to give me the option to advantage, disadvantage. So these little icons are simply uh, an attention thing saying, by the way, know this. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I, I forgot is on any of these windows, if we right click it, it will pop out as a window that we can move. So you can see we can now move it around. Um, in this small of a screen, it's going to get a little congested and stuff, but it will allow you to actually have more of these things open than you know just one. So I usually would have open like the combat tracker because that's pretty important to have and being able to see what's going on, you know. So anyway, I think this will do. My voice is just about to give out. I apologize for any of the little unknown quirks that happened while we were doing this. It's bound to happen. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget to tell everyone you know about my channel. I'm check it out. If they like what they see, they can sub. We'll just grow the channel. And that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.